Now we're going to take a look at the Hoffman rearrangement, and this reaction is new. Uh, and a lot of students will confuse this one with the reduction of amide, so I just want to compare the two. And if you notice here with uh, the reaction we've seen in the past here, reduction of an amide with lithium hydride, we start off with four carbons, we end up with four carbons. With this Hoffman rearrangement here, we are going to actually lose the entire carbonyl group. So again, we're starting off with four carbons, but we're only ending up with three. So in this synthesis, and we can use sodium hypobromide here, or more commonly you'll see Br2 and hydroxide used. Uh, and we're going to take a look at the mechanism in depth here, just for you that might be responsible. Uh, but just know that a lot of you may not even have this reaction in your course, uh, and may not have the mechanism, but I'm taking the time to do it for those that do. Uh, so let's kind of see how this plays out here. So you're going to have a molecule of Br2 here. Uh, and your amine, I'm sorry, your amide, the lone pair here is first going to come to a nucleophilic attack, connecting to a bromine. And that's going to leave us. Now with a bromine attached to our nitrogen. So, and then you're going to have a hydroxide ion come in and deprotonate. So proton transfer reaction. And the big thing here is that now we have a leaving group attached to our nitrogen. That's going to kind of be the key later on. So, and here's where the big rearrangement comes from. So this bond right here is going to break and reattach to the nitrogen, kicking off the leaving group, but simultaneously so that this carbon right here doesn't end up being a carbocation, we're going to dump these electrons in here. And you could show it as a matter of resonance technically, but I'm going to show up in one step with one structure. So now your nitrogen is still bonded to a hydrogen, but now it's bonded to the carbon chain. So, and again, it's also still bonded to the carbon that's double bonded to oxygen, but now instead of a single bond, it is now a double bond with that lone pair dumping in right there. So, and this thing is called an isocyanate. Cool. So, and this is the big part of the mechanism you need to know. And so this isocyanate here, uh, in the presence of water, so we'll undergo a nucleophilic attack, and I'm not showing any more of the mechanism than just simply this. Uh, so this is going to undergo nucleophilic attack, but eventually you're going to lose CO2. So I'll just do minus CO2, and you're simply going to be left with your amine. So a variety of proton transfers, loss of CO2, uh, and you get your amine. Uh, this is the Hoffman rearrangement mechanism, and again, just up to the formation of the isocyanate. Uh, the isocyanate here is probably the only mechanism you're responsible for, if any at all.